Welcome back to the Forge of Sagas. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is, how do you paint your miniatures? And a lot of times that question refers to my custom Blood Angels successor chapter, the Scarab Guardians. Now I had five Assault Terminators that needed painting, so I figured this would be the opportune time to show you guys my painting process for Marines. So without further ado, let's get started. When I'm painting miniatures, I usually start with a base and work my way up. For these bases, I primed them with gray sear and then gave them a coat of Agaros Dunes contrast paint. I like this color because it gives me a nice dark base to work from and it reflects the desert nature of the planet that my Space Marine chapter is based on. As you may or may not have guessed, my Scarab Guardians chapter has an ancient Egyptian influence and therefore I like to grab elements of both the 40k and Age of Sigmar basing kits to give the bases a ruined temple feel. Not all of those will get the Agoras Dunes treatment, as this gives me some options to put on other colors later in the process. Once the Agoras Dunes is dry, I grab some gray sear, same color that these were primed, and give the bases a quick dry brush. This helps to add a couple of quick highlights and really reinforce that dusty, weathered, ruined look that I want for these bases. If it ever gets too thick, you can see I'm just smudging it around with my finger a little bit, and it works perfectly. Too easy. When I have larger elements from the basin kits that have different images on them, I like to treat them as though they were the murals you see on the walls of ancient Egyptian temples and give them a little color. The piece on this base is part of a larger image of a space marine holding a sword, so I decided to paint his robes the primary color of my chapter, which is Flesh Terror's Red. I painted his cord using Black Templar, the skull using Nazdrak Yellow, the parchment using Skeleton Horde, and the sword using Space Wolf Grey. Now, unfortunately, my footage of that process was corrupted by the warp, but the process is the same for applying any contrast paint. Just go ahead and slap it on there, make sure it doesn't pool too much, and you'll be fine. Now it's time to actually paint some marines. I used Lead Belcher as my primer, and then I started by coming in with a layer of Black Templar contrast paint over the lower section of the legs. I really love the effect you get from putting contrast paint over a metallic base, as the translucent nature of contrast paint gives you this subtle but inherent highlight from the underlying metallic without you having to do any work at all. This technique may not win you any golden demons, but I think it looks really good on the tabletop and it's a really efficient way to paint your marines. If at any point during the process you're like me and you accidentally get paint somewhere where you don't want it, no worries, just come in with some lead belcher and touch it up real quick. Now a lot of my Scarab Guardians will have robes and these Terminators are no different. So once I block in the big black pieces on the legs, I'll come in with some thinned down gray sear and paint the robes. The reason I like to do this after I paint the boots is because it just allows me to do that extra layer of cleanup, especially if I'm not gonna be doing black robes, which I will not be doing for these Terminators. The second major color for my Space Marine chapter is Flesh Terror's Red Contrast Paint. Here on the Terminator, you can see I am picking out the robes, as well as the upper portion of the armor on the legs, as well as a few other details around the boot. Since the Scarab Guardians are a Blood Angel successor, there was no way I could have a paint scheme without red. However, I really like the fact that the Flesh Terror's red is a lot darker than the Blood Angel's red contrast paint, and really helps reinforce the grim dark feel of my Space Marine chapter. Whenever I have different things hanging off the model, like the leather straps and the tassels you can see here on the Terminator, I'll go ahead and paint them colors that match the overall color scheme of the chapter. So for here, we've got these long leather straps, those will look good in black, whereas the little tassels, those are more of a cloth element, we'll go ahead and match those to the Flesh Terror's red of the cape. Now that our two primary colors are blocked in for legs, it's time to do another cleanup session with the lead belcher. And the other thing we're going to grab here is the details that are on the legs. I do this by making sure I only have a little bit of paint on the brush and then holding it at a very extreme angle so that it just brushes over the top to bring out those details like the eagles or any of the other little bits that are on these custodies legs that I've used in this conversion. This technique allows me to get the paint I need on the raised details without ruining any of the work that I've already done. Now we're going to get to the last of the core colors for my Space Marine chapter, which is Nazdreg Yellow Contrast Paint. This gets applied over all the areas that have exposed lead belcher, and I really like the aged gold look that you get from this particular paint. It doesn't look new, it doesn't look shiny, it looks like it's been weathered and tempered in the fires of battle in the 41st millennium. It also helps add a very ornate feeling to the armor, 
which is another tribute to the artistry that you would expect from a Blood Angel successor chapter. And there we go, we've got the entire lower half of our Space Marine painted. But you might be asking yourself, why did I only paint the bottom half of the Space Marine? Well, the answer to that is, I'm now going to glue it to the base. One of the big weaknesses of contrast paint is that if you hold it, the oils in your skin will cause it to rub off. By starting with the base and the lower half of the model, I can glue those together and then hold onto the base while I start painting the upper body. This might be slightly less efficient time-wise, but I find that it helps prevent me from having to go back and do a lot of touch-up work when I get to the end of the project. For the torso of the armor, we're going to start with a layer of Flesh Terrors Red to cover the majority of the surface. The paint scheme that I picked for this chapter is based on both the Blood Angels and the Shadow Keeper shield host from the Adeptus Custodes. The background that I've created for my successor chapter ties them very heavily to the Shadow Keeper shield host, and if you'd like to know more about that, leave me a comment on this video and I'll look into doing an army showcase video for the Scarab Guardians so that you can hear some of the lore behind this army, as well as see the many conversions that I had done before I started this channel. Just like before, once we've got that base layer of our main color down, I come in with Lead Belcher and pick out all the details again. I prefer being a little heavy-handed with the contrast to start and then touching up the details after, as I find it gives me an overall smoother application of the contrast paint and prevents any unwanted pooling. Just like our red was our accent color for the lower body, Black Templar is going to be our accent for the upper body. On these Terminators, my main accent points were the large headdress that they have at the top of the armor, these stripes again reminiscent of the crowns of ancient pharaohs, as well as the top of the helmet and some of the machinery on the back of the armor. No matter what the model is, I use the Black Templar to help break up the large patches of flesh tear and just provide those little notes of visual interest. And then, just like with the legs, we're going to come in with a layer of Nazdrag yellow and pick out all of the different ornamental facets of the armor. This is going to help reinforce that ornate feeling that we expect from the Scarab Guardians. Arms for my marines get painted in the same pattern as the legs, with the bicep area being painted red, and the forearm being painted black. For shoulder pads, I use black for the majority of the chapter, and then use the flesh tears red to denote my sergeants. And again, any details that I have will be picked out using the Nazdrag yellow. With most of the details done, we can go ahead and attach the arms and see how we're looking. And I really did like how these Terminators came out. However, our power weapons still need a little bit of that power vibe, so we're going to give them some color too. My go-to color for power weapons in this army is Warp Lightning Green. This vibrant green gives a really nice contrast to the very dark and gritty color scheme that I've picked for the armor, and the translucent nature of the contrast paint again gives us that nice metallic highlight that we're always looking for when we paint power weapons. To add a little bit more shimmer to my power weapons, I like to add a layer of Waystone Green Technical Paint. This paint is normally used to achieve a gemstone effect, but when I paint it over the Warp Lightning in a nice, thin coat, I find that it just adds a little bit of variety in color as well as a bit of a glossiness that really helps bring the power weapon to life. I also apply the Waystone Green directly over the Lead Belcher for my eyes, as it gives me this really nice reflective lens. The only thing we have left to do is paint the edge of the base with a layer of aggro dunes. I know some people prefer to paint the edges of their rims completely black, but I find that painting them a similar color to what is actually on the base helps tie the entire model together and create an overall more coherent look. And there you have it, a unit of Assault Terminators ready to join their battle brothers in their crusades against the Heretic, the Mutant, and the Xenos. For such a simple process, I'm always amazed by how good these models look when they're on the tabletop. And the best part is that even if you don't choose the same color scheme as I did with the Scarab Guardians, you can take the techniques that I've shown in this video, as well as any of the colors from the Citadel Contrast range, and use them to give your own chapter that nice, sleek, colored metallic look and have them ready for battle in no time. If you enjoyed this video, Give us a like and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our future content. If you have any suggestions for things you'd like to see in the future, whether it's conversions, terrain building, painting, or army showcases, or anything else you could think of, 
leave me a comment and I'll look into it. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again the next time we ignite the Forge of Sagas.